guess that'll do. Hey everybody, Uncle Dane here with a video involving something kind of specific to the NG class, building during setup time. Uh, now, typically during setup time, most classes have very little to do except get into position. Perhaps the medic will prepare an uber charge and demo men can set up sticky traps, but other than that, everyone else can pretty much just screw around and play rock, paper, scissors for 60 seconds. However, for an engineer, set of time is a big part of the game, and so I wanted to show you guys something I've been messing around with using a few of the new NG features added in the gunmetal update, specifically the updated JAG stats and the ability to change wrenches without destroying any buildings. Uh, you may notice that I'm playing on low textures right now. I'm doing this because reasons. If you... <laughs> throw fit because I'm not playing this game on high everything you're being a dink I don't play TF2 for the graphics that'd be weird so anyway let's talk about what's on screen here what you're watching is me simulating a standard defensive setup on upward using only the jag and ammo packs now, for the entirety of this video I'm gonna assume that there is no one else helping me for instance I'm not having my teleporter upgraded by other engineers at spawn I'm not being whipped by a soldier using a disciplinary action and I'm not being given ammo by fellow teammates who suicide at the front. This is just to see what I can do with no teamwork whatsoever. So right now the gates have opened, and we'll take a look at what we're able to do in 60 seconds. We've got a level 3 sentry, a level 1 dispenser, and a level 1 teleporter that is about to be upgraded to level 2, although it's still being upgraded. Now keep in mind, I'm using the JAG, and ever since the gunmetal update, this thing does everything faster because of the faster swing speed. So technically, since we were able to upgrade faster, this is slightly better than what we'd be able to do with any other wrench. So a little backstory, my friend Gabriel, who is also an engineer main, showed me a video where he used the Eureka effect in combination with the Jag in order to bypass the slower upgrade speed and lower ammo pickup that the Eureka effect has while setting up. If you want to see the whole thing, you can click on the video, but uh, this gave me the idea of using the Eureka effect to speed up the upgrade process for all wrenches, as well as leave you with more metal after the gates open, all without anyone helping you. Although with a small amount of teamwork, this technique could be executed even faster. So uh, before I show you guys what I've deemed the JAG effect rollout, I must mention a few things. One, I'm using a few quick switch binds to help me speed things up. I'm using a, a button that I can press to quickly switch between my A and C loadouts. The A loadout is for the JAG, and the C loadout is for the Eureka effect. I'm also using a bind that allows me to bypass the teleporter menu for the Eureka effect. Normally, you'd have to wait for the wrench to be out and ready to use, press reload, and then press 1 or 2 in order to teleport, but this bind allows me to press B to teleport back to spawn instantly without having to use the wrench at all. So uh, this config will be available for you to steal in the description of this video. Second thing to mention is that I'm demonstrating this technique on a few payload maps, but this can be used for attack defense, but payload is a lot more popular in both pubs and in Highlander, so I thought it'd be more appropriate. Anyway, let's get right into it. Right away, using the Eureka effect, I'm going to place down all three buildings in front of spawn. A teleporter entrance in the middle, a dispenser to the left, and a sentry to the right. Now I'm speeding things along by a second or two by hitting my quick switch bind to switch me to the same loadout I currently have. This is the equivalent of touching the resupply cabinet. However, the cabinet is so close to the spawn door in this situation that it barely even matters on this map. Now during the long walk to the front, at some point I hit my quick switch bind for the jag so that when I teleport myself back to spawn, I will instantly have the jag ready. Uh, now, why did I place those buildings at the front? Well, it's for two reasons. I want them as close to an infinite ammo source as possible so that I can quickly upgrade the buildings as well as allowing the dispenser to start building as quickly as possible. Normally, I'd be placing that dispenser at the front after I'd place my sentry gun. Now remember, the dispenser takes 21 seconds to completely construct itself, so the later you put it down, the later it will become available for your teammates to start using. The dispenser is also the only building that actually gains something over time, metal supply. So right now I have fully upgraded my sentry and my teleporter to level 3 with 10 seconds left, so at this point, I quickly switch back to the Eureka effect, grab my sentry gun, and take it through the teleporter. Immediately, I'll walk over to where I want to put it and teleport back to spawn. At this point, you can switch to whatever wrench you want. I chose to stick with the Jag, and then I grab my dispenser and take it to the front as well. After placing it down, it's only a matter of seconds after the gates open that I have a level 3 sentry and teleporter, along with a dispenser that is more than halfway full of metal. Now keep in mind that this was done with no support at all. This could be done a bit faster if I was originally whipped at the front, which could have shaved about 3 or 4 seconds off my time, so technically this could all be done before the gates even open. Also, if I wanted to, I could use the extra metal in the dispenser to upgrade it all the way to level 3. 
I'd suggest doing this because it's highly unlikely that you'll get into any confrontations right away, so I'd use the initial downtime to your advantage. Now, that all might have happened so quickly that you didn't fully uh, catch everything that went down, so I'll do the same thing on Badwater Pro. Uh, we'll place the teleporter entrance in the middle, a dispenser to the left, and a sentry to the right. Uh, for Badwater, the quick switch bind actually does come in handy because of the resupply cabinet being pretty far away from the spawn door, so uh, you'll see me use it a little bit more effectively in this clip than I did on Upward. Uh, exclusive to Badwater Pro, that uh, fence by the second capture point prevents a very long sniper sightline that can be devastating for people crossing over to the roof overlooking the point, but it also prevents me from jumping over that concrete divider, which you can normally do on the regular version of Badwater, I just thought I'd mention that. And remember, on my way to the front, I hit my quick switch bind to preemptively switch my loadout from the Eureka effect to the Jag, so that after I teleport back to spawn, I will already have the Jag out and ready to go. Now, for some reason, while a teleporter exit is constructing on the other side, the entrance actually will eat a little bit of metal for no reason on the first swing. Uh, I have no idea why this happens. Uh, I'm almost positive it's a bug. But it's always been like that. Uh, luckily we have a dispenser right next to us, so I will edge myself a little bit towards it to grab a dose of metal to make up for Valve's buggy game. Uh, <laughs> this way I don't have to refill my ammo a third time to finish upgrading the teleporter. So after everything's upgraded, I have 10 seconds left, so I'll switch to the Eureka effect, grab my sentry, and take it to its sentry spot. Uh, one of my favorites being on the edge of this cliff here. Uh, instantly teleporting back to spawn, but only after hitting the bind that switches me back to the Jag so that I can grab my dispenser and bring it to the front just as the gates open. Once again, this rollout can be made a tad faster with the disciplinary action, so you can theoretically have everything up and running before the countdown even hits zero. And for good measure, we'll do this on the new payload map added in Gunmetal. Borneo. The Jag effect setup is done a little differently on this map because of how ridiculously small the spawn door is, so I'll be putting the initial buildings in a slightly different formation here. So you'll notice that I used a combination of the good old fashioned supply cabinet bump and the quick switch bind. This is because after the cabinet has been touched by your character once, there's a cooldown on when it can be used again. I bypass this cooldown by only using the quick switch right after I've used the resupply. Past this point, you guys should know the drill on the way to the front. Switch your loadout to the Jag so that when you teleport back, you have your Jag all ready to go. Uh, not much else to explain except to point out that yes, I realize that this is a very minuscule and specific thing to make a video about, and yes, I realize that I'm a giant nerd for spending hours making a video explaining how to reduce your setup time by like 15 seconds, but hey, this is my jam. You're still the one watching it. Uh, oh, oh, hey, did you guys see that? The position of the dispenser made it awkward for me to grab a dose of metal to make up for the metal that the teleporter ate, so I had to cross over top of it. That could have been messy if I had accidentally taken the teleporter, and I'm not using the Eureka effect right now, so I pulled it off, ladies and gentlemen. I finished the upgrade just in time so the level up animation would play, instead of teleporting me while I stood on top of it. These are some next level plays. Anyway, grab the sentry, spin it around unnecessarily, place it down, and teleport back to spawn with your preferred wrench to grab the dispenser, and voila, we've pulled off the jag effect perfectly. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video, I hope that I at least showed you something interesting or different that was not possible before the recent engineer revamp. I'm not really sure if this will make a huge difference, but nonetheless, I thought it was pretty neat, So, uh, and I like making videos about things that I think are neat. And I will see you nieces and nephews next time. Bye bye!